Ito guys, niko hapa Sour House. Nimeenda kuona one of the gainers. I told you about Dr. Wanyoro and uh, he's a gynecologist and he's found in Vika. Here I am, it is in Vika. So I want to go and have a chat with him. I want to have a moment with Dr. Wanyoro and I'm so, so sure that you guys will appreciate this. Eh? So I'm visiting him today so that we can have a moment, a session, so that he's able to answer all your gynecological issues. And especially, specifically, me today will be talking about infertility. Any other thing, maybe we shall discuss later. But for today, I want us to go see the doc and talk about infertility. And I hope he will be helped. But even before then, guys, before then, I want to tell you about the people I hang around with. You have seen my videos with so many ladies. Our ladies, ni watu wakujituma, wako kazi. You can see my t-shirt label, Suzy Yule Diodem. I hope it is visible. We are able to see these. Then I'll also show you from the back how it has been done. Suzy Yule Diodem. I hope you are able to see it. Chani wandole manyele. Suzy Yule Diodem t-shirt. So one of the ladies who are, is in my channel, you have seen her, she's Beth, she's in town. If you want your, all your graphic work done, you'll find her in town. And um, her shop is uh, Smile Graphics. She does amazing, amazing job. She's the one who has done the t-shirt, both the front side. Actually, she's the one who designed the logo. I just knew I needed a logo, but I consulted her. So she's also a consultant, and it comes to design and graphic. Hi, Beth, you're doing a good job. And my viewers, I cannot hesitate to refer you to Graphic Smiles as women to promote Yane. And I like the people I hang around with. We are not idolers. And Kazia to see Kuenda Mahaiks, most of the time we don't have to outings now, but in what we kujituma. So if you need a good jeans, doll shoes sport shoes yeah show them my shoe oh uh, doll shoes sport shoes anything to do with shoes i appreciate women and what they do and ours is to support each other when we are doing those road trips we normally do them after we have worked so what i was telling you is that we have these jeans and my doll shoes and Many of the sport shoes, and yeah, those that you see me with, I get them from Flossie Kings and Queens. That is where Luku in Angaliwangwa Kule. So she does a good, amazing job. Shirts, if you need a shirt for jeans to match with your jeans, she has them. Actually, she has filled, Flossie Kings has filled my wardrobe. So most of the time when it is casual wear, not official, but casual wear, but I have seen her in the official wear. So just go visit her page, shop, shop, shop from there. Let's promote each other, especially you women. Let us promote each other. Thank you, my guys. Thank you so much. Suzy Yule Diadem, please subscribe if you've not. Please like, share, and comment. Yo, yo, so that is my channel label and my ch Thank you so much, Beth, for the amazing, amazing t-shirt. I love it, I love it. Beth normally does the branding of if you have a shop, if you have a business, just promote my people, promote my people. Now let me tell, to, take you back to where we were going. We were going to see our gynecologist, eh? Dr. Wanyoro. So this is where we are at Ithika. This is his, um, when you come at Sour House, first floor, wanataka kumutafuta, utampata hapo. So karibu ni guys. Karibu ni guys. We shall have a moment to share. I'm not shouting a lot because this building has other businesses, but definitely I know you are able to hear me. So just visit him for the best. You know, the reason why I choose to talk to Dr. Wanyoro specifically and not any other guy, it's because uh, he will tell us how many years he has practiced. Eh? But for me, I've known Dr. Wanyoro since 20, 2021. I visited Dr. Wanyoro in 2012, actually 2011. And I have so many women that I have referred to Dr. Wanyoro and Wamepat, they have been helped. Eh? That's the reason as to why I thought this is the best guy for me to talk to because the issue I had come with when I came to see him, nearly 
nilisaidika personally nilisaidika and that's why i said i've referred him to many other people by the way i'm not doing this for advertisement i've not been paid by the way he even don't know that i'm saying this maybe when he watch the video he will hear this testimony so i've not been paid to advertise a doctor because it would even be weird anyway this is ndio zimem cell so let's go and hear more about it welcome Hi guys, Suzy Ledadem, living positive regardless. Doesn't matter the point at which you are in life, but we love positivity all the way. An exciting time once again. You know what I love most talking about. And today, interesting as I had already informed you earlier that we will be having a gyna who will be able to help us to answer some of the questions that has been coming in. So I'll not take too long before I introduce you to our gynecologist. So guys just join me and you'll we'll come to meet him today. Hello Dr. Ali. Hello Suzy. Good to meet you. Thank you. Welcome to Suzy Redadem channel. And uh, we shall talk more and uh, I know my viewers have been telling them about Dr. Wanyoro but they know nothing else beyond that. So I will just give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to them that they know who you are, what you do, then we shall do. So karibu sana. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Wanyoro, or uh, in the academic area, uh, area you can call me Professor Wanyoro. I'm actually a gynecologist, uh, obstetrician for more than 20 years. Currently, I'm an, an associate professor of obstetrics and gynecology, teaching at Kenyatta University. And uh, my passion is to take care of women and manage their problems. Wow. Thank you, Senator Dattari. Thank you even for creating time for us and time for women in general because this, uh, this video is going far and wide. So you are not only helping Suzy Ledadem as an individual, but you are helping the society. And uh, since I found you in your office, I would not like to take too much of your time. So you'll just allow me to get right into it. Um, to me, I talk with many people and especially now women although I know as we go by you'll help us to know whether such issues are only experienced by women or it's because women are the ones who are more vocal and open in sharing of the things and one of the topics that has really proved to it needs it requires information it's about fertility and that's where I want to narrow our discussion today I will not close up to any th other thing that you'd want to talk about, but I want to just first of all narrow about infertility. And maybe Dr. Ali, I'll start by asking you, do we have anything like infertility or do we have a group of people we can call barren? Well, uh, thank you. So infertility is a wide topic and uh, as you have said, there are many couples uh, that cannot get children or they have gotten a child before or a pregnancy before and then you find that uh, they cannot get uh, pregnant. So these are the people that uh, we talk about and we say that uh, these people have an infertility problem. So of course we know that many couples get worried when they uh, get married or they are together and they decide to have a child and uh, they find they are taking a month or two uh, before they can conceive. However, we define infertility as that couple that is uh, living together, having regular sexual intercourse, and they have taken a whole 12 months before they can register a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Because by the 12 of the month from starting, majority of couples uh, would have had a pregnancy mm -hmm. unless there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the problem can be with the woman, the problem can be in the man because you find that uh, about 40% of uh, uh, couples that cannot get a pregnancy is because the woman has a problem. Mm -hmm. Whereas, on the other side, mm -hmm. if 40% the other 40 percent can also can be because the man has a problem okay in very rare circumstances you may find that 
the woman has a problem, the man has a problem. Mm -hmm. But this occurs in about 20%. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Wow. So in the medical term, we, yes, we can say yes, we have people we would call infertile. Yes, in medically we can call, we have people who are infertile. Okay. Yes. Wow. So I will just maybe read uh, a question from one of my viewers. And uh, as uh, I can, I don't know, it's about, uh, they have already tried the IVF, but even before we go there, because I would want you to tell us more about the IVF procedure and all that, huh? I would want to address the first part, because they are saying they have been trying to conceive for the last three years, the doctors have said everything is okay, so now they were wondering if they start a chance for IVF because the, the doctors have said there's nothing wrong with them. Eh? So now maybe before you talk to us about IVF, I would want to know what could cause people that were metastiva, everything else, and they are okay, yet they are not conceiving. Okay, maybe I'll go back a little and explain uh, how fertilization occurs. Uh -huh. How do people get uh, pregnant? So there are several things that must be correct. Okay. The first one, uh, this is the reproductive system in a woman, where we have the uterus, uh, we have the birth canal, then we have uh, next to the uterus, we have two fallopian tubes, and then we have two ovaries. So ideally, every month after a woman starts to have her menstrual period, so that time we call that woman or that girl, to be a mature reproductive wise. So an egg is supposed to be produced on the, in the ovary every month, every month. And as that egg is produced, there is production of hormones. And one of the roles of those hormones is to go and prepare the inner lining of the uterus to receive that egg that month, in case there is fertilization. If there is no fertilization, that inner lining, which we call the endometrium, is shed off as the period. Then, after that egg is developed in the, in the ovaries, then it is supposed to be picked by the fallopian tubes. And one of the sperms, after sexual intercourse, a sperm will uh, travel all the way towards the head of the fallopian tube where fertilization will happen. Mm -hmm. It is only seven to eight days after fertilization that that egg will have reached the uterus and then it implants to become a baby. So several things may happen. One, you may find a woman who is not ovulating on a regular basis either because of an acquired problem or the woman was born with a congenital problem. So was born with a problem that does not allow her to have uh, ovulation. Yes. So in most of these patients, you may find that they don't have menses. So they have something we call a primary amenorrhea. Okay. So if a woman is not ovulating, then there is no, there is no egg that will be fertilized. Uh -huh. So that is a cause of major cause of infertility. Okay. And of course there are some women who get menses, but their menses are irregular. Mm -hmm. So we say that those women may have polycystic things like polycystic ovarian disease. Okay. <clears throat> then the other major cause of not getting pregnant is, is if the fallopian tubes are blocked for whatever reason whether it is an ineffective process or whether it was surgery, uh, then that woman will be ovulating, so she will be getting regular periods, they will be having normal sexual intercourse, but the two eggs cannot meet because the uh, fallopian tubes are blocked. Mm -hmm. Oh, the third common thing is when the male seed is not adequate or the, 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 the male is not producing any sperms, mm -hmm. or the sperms cannot be able to move through the, uh, the uterus to the fallopian tubes, mm -hmm. then that can cause infertility. Mm -hmm. It is in very, very rare circumstances mm -hmm. where you will find that you investigate the woman and you investigate the man and you find both are normal mm -hmm. and they are not getting a baby. Mm -hmm. Of course, in that rare circumstance, you may find that when the sperms are deposited in the birth canal, mm -hmm. then there are some 
some things we call anti-sperm antibodies okay. in the mucus of the woman, mm -hmm. the cervical mucus, and you find that the sperms cannot move. So they, they just undergo some process that we call a sh shaking movement. Mm -hmm. So they just stay in one place, they shake, shake like that mm -hmm. until they die and they cannot move. Maybe that is what that such a couple may be having. Okay. Yes. And it's not possible to identify that? It is possible to identify mm -hmm. that. Sometimes, of course, other rare conditions other than anti-sperm antibodies mm -hmm. is when you find there is uh, some uh, chromosomal abnormalities within the uh, the sperm of the uh, of the person. Mm -hmm. So nowadays you can do a lot of genetic tests that will tell you is this egg that is normal, does it have a chromosome or a genetic error okay. that will make it not to be able to fertilize. Okay. Yes. So generally, doctor, what you're saying, it can't be that everything is normal. You, if, if that is the case, you ought to still continue seeking more opinion so that there should be a reason. In most of the times, there should be a reason of not a couple not getting pregnant. Okay. So it's, of course sometimes science may not be able, of course we don't know everything yes. in nature and there are some new things that are coming out, mm -hmm. especially issues to do with the genetics, the genome and also the chromosomes mm -hmm. that now we thought maybe these are people we could say they are normal mm -hmm. but when you look at the cells mm -hmm. and the genetic makeup of those cells you find there is an abnormality. Okay. So of course things keep on uh, being discovered as I, time goes on. Yes. I still go to another question where someone is saying they are almost 40 years, they have been in two marriages. This is a man who is saying that both wives didn't conceive. The man, him, he tested and he found he's okay, but he never tested the wives. Mm -hmm. so he didn't want to disclose anything. Eh? So he was wondering what could have been the issue. I think it's what you have explained. Okay, yes, it could be many issues. Of course, one of the things that you'd want to know about the man is his age, mm -hmm. because we know that uh, most of men's genetic problems, uh, as men grow older also, we, they, all the sperms that are produced may also become uh, abnormal, maybe abnormal. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, it is very rare that uh, you'll, ma you'll, have, you'll be in two relationships as a man and you find that the man is normal and then you find you are unlucky that this woman has a problem, then the next one has a problem and the third one has a problem. Mm -hmm. So for fertility issues, it's always good to look at, yes, what is the problem before you even go to IVF because IVF is going towards the end. Mm -hmm. So there are many problems that you can solve before you go to IVF. Because if, if there are some things that cannot be solved and then that's when you resort now to IVF. Okay. Yes. Uh, especially to men, what could be a trigger? Are there things that could uh, cause infertility? Yes. So for men, the main uh, cause, if it is not a problem that a man was born with and there are many men who are men like me and they have congenital abnormalities in as far as the sex or, uh, chromosomes are concerned so you find that their sperm are low or they don't have normal sperms or there are no sperms then of course there is also a big group of men where you find they were normal but they got an infection. An infection could occur in the testes, which I call basically the factory for the sperms. And uh, one of the major problems that occurs in childhood is when children get mumps. Mumps is the swelling of the gland here, it's a viral infection. Okay. And occasionally you may find that uh, that infection may go to, this, uh, to the testicles mm -hmm. and then it affects the sperm production. Mm -hmm. The other problem is when men are born with this undescended testicles mm -hmm. and these are not taken care of, so the normal 
position for the testes is in the scrotum because there is, uh, it's supposed to have less uh, uh, temperature for the spans to be uh, manufactured or made. Mm -hmm. So if we don't take care of such a, a child, then you may find the child has a problem. Okay. At the end. Then the other major acquired problem for men is infections, more like gonorrhea okay. or chlamydia, which blocks uh, the tubes that connect the, spa, uh, the, uh, the testicles mm -hmm. to where the sperms are stored. Mm -hmm. It is called the vas difference. So when this tube is blocked, the man will be able to have sex, he will ejaculate, but it will produce semen which does not have any in 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 in, in his palms. Mm -hmm. of course uh, uh, the way of living living styles mm -hmm. uh, issues of drinking too much of alcohol mm -hmm. cause the uh, misuse of drugs mm -hmm. can also cause men to have uh, spam problems okay. yes wow um, let me read the other question. We have been trying for more than five years, like you. Okay, I had given my story that I had tried conceiving and I had an IVF. So they are saying, uh, she was telling me she has a failed IVF. And uh, wow, I like this question because she's saying that she has been told to relax because stress can cause delayed conception. Um, I know that because I don't control. Okay, now she was asking. I know this one is more of me sharing why now I'm happy even without conceiving because she feels that she cannot relax. Like, okay, how it's a problem that you have. Huh? Now, my question to you, Doc, is it true that uh, when you are in stress, it delays your conception? Because also, most this is my personal view most of the rainbow babies come when the couple actually not just the woman the couple is so stressed and they are crying the pain of the lost child and that's the time they conceive now the rainbow baby so is it true that stress can delay your conception uh i would say yes uh because one the reproductive cycle what I try to explain from the development of the egg uh, of a woman is affected by many things and one of the things that the well-being of a woman determines the uh, the sexual cycle and that's why you fight in majority of girls when they are doing an exam you may find the periods will either delay or the periods may come a bit early. Mm -hmm. That is because of the effect of the environment on the higher center. Because for the ovulation to occur, it starts from the environment, the women's health, and also the, from the environment, then you go to other uh, glands that are in the brain. One is called hypothalamus, the other one is pituitary. So when there is a bit of stress, then some hormones will be higher than the others. Mm -hmm. So the control sometimes may be a problem. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say that, of course, like even in, uh, if you look at twins, mm -hmm. of course there are many uh, times that couples will get twins, mm -hmm. but uh, if you look at seasons, seasons affect also the twins. And you find in countries where they have uh, winter, spring, uh, summer, and the, the other one, mm -hmm. you find that there are more, more twins are conceived during the summer. When oh. couples are happy, women are happy, women are relaxed, then you find that they may ovulate two eggs. Okay. So I, I believe that uh, when women are under a lot of stress, mm -hmm. uh, it may affect their uh, ability to conceive. And uh, these sometimes women will go all the way to have something we call pseudosiasis or forced pregnancy, where because of the stress that I'm having to, call, to uh, looking for a baby, then the, my periods stop and my body starts to behave like I am pregnant. So my tummy will grow bigger 
okay? Uh, but it is just because of the stress that we have. And that's why we advise couples, when they are looking for a baby, not to get so much worried. Sometimes it's also good to trust in God and uh, know that couples, when they come together, one of the things that uh, God is ready to do is to give them a baby. So, and of course, stress has never helped. Even when you are going to work and you are stressed, maybe you are driving, you will not reach your work, please. You, you are likely to crash or something like that. So stress does not help situations and it will not help in getting a baby. Okay. Yes. Wow. Guys, you just have to find ways of avoiding stress. I was wishing, Dr. Terry, you said it doesn't affect because sometimes it is hard when you're going through such a hard thing and you are told, relax. So you're wondering now, how do I relax? Huh? Now, this someone who has had three, five miscarriages in three, three years in marriage with five miscarriages. What do you think would be the major cause of miscarriage? Uh, miscarriages have different causes. And uh, of course, what uh, such a patient, we define them as having recurrent pregnancy losses. And you look at uh, two levels of uh, pregnancy losses. So is it early pregnancy losses, like first trimester or second, early second trimester? So the trimesters, guys, pregnancies are divided into three uh, trimesters of 13 weeks, 13 weeks, 13 weeks. Because the normal pregnancy will go to 40 weeks. So first trimester is... Uh, from our starts from week zero to that in the week, then we go to the second trimester like that. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, some women who will have recurrent first trimester losses, and in most of these women, we think of uh, chromosomal abnormalities mm -hmm. uh, or uh, something we call luteal phase defect, where the hormone that is supposed to maintain that pregnancy uh, is not adequate. So if it is not a chromosomal abnormality occurring in the first trimester, then uh, leading to a pregnancy where the nothing grows inside that fertilized egg, then you could have a fertilized egg and something starts to grow, but then because the hormones are not adequate and the placenta has not developed yet, then you lose that pregnancy. Of course, we also have second trimester losses, which in most of the times is because of a problem with the uterus. Either the uterus is abnormal or a patient was born with a congenital abnormality of the uterus, where you may find a uterus if a woman has two uteruses or there is uh, one uh, horn or two horns of the uterus, etc. Or in some instances, it may be because of uh, a woman having some infections mm -hmm. that will be passed to the baby as the baby grows. Mm -hmm. And then you find that uh, baby uh, dies in uterus and then that pregnancy comes out. Sometimes it could be because of uh, some uh, illnesses in women, uh, systemic illnesses in women, etc. But there are many causes of recurrent pregnancy losses. And what are we doing nowadays? For such a lady, the best thing would be to see the doctor before she conceives. Because there are things, there are medications you can give preconceptually in such a patient mm -hmm. so that by the time that mother or that woman is conceiving, mm -hmm. then she is already on medication mm -hmm. to try and increase the chances of a normal pregnancy. Mm -hmm. There are some investigations that you can, give, you can do to these women mm -hmm. and know is there something that we can treat before the woman gets pregnant. Mm -hmm. You can also look at chromosomal makeup of both the woman and the and uh, and uh, and uh, the, the 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 man, and know whether there are genetical abnormalities in such a couple, okay. so that you can be able to advise accordingly. Okay. But there is hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for 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 me, I'm not so much worried about that woman who is 
able to conceive mm -hmm. but loses that pregnancy because there are things that can be done to be able to maintain uh, that pregnancy and to help such a woman okay. because even in fertility nowadays there are so many ways that you can treat these women mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in most of the times they get a pregnancy Okay. I would want us to go now to the treatments that are available, but before then I would want to ask on the same about miscarriage. Uh, do you think, I would feel like three, uh, five miscarriages in three years, is it too soon to conceive between one pregnancy or the other, or there are no timelines? Uh, well, of course, we normally tell women uh, to delay the next pregnancy after losing a pregnancy for two main reasons. The first reason is that you can investigate and know what caused that pregnancy loss. Mm -hmm. And then you can put interventions to try and reduce the risk in that woman. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, of course, during a miscarriage, majority of women will have bleeding and we would want them for the next pregnant before the next pregnancy at least to have gained some uh, little bit of uh, what they had lost mm -hmm. so that they are able to carry the pregnancy to town mm -hmm. but when you look at it critically mm -hmm. uh, of course not remember in this woman who has lost a pregnancy there is still something in her heart that is not has not been fulfilled yes so you'll find that such women you want to get pregnant uh, very fast mm -hmm. so that what was is not fulfilled in her heart can be fulfilled mm -hmm. but it is not the not staying long enough that cost causes a miscarriage okay, okay? okay. it is not that because you find a woman uh, maybe gets her first pregnancy at 20 weeks, I mean 24 years, and loses that pregnancy. And she has stayed from the time she was born to 24 years. Uh, so we cannot blame the not uh, staying or uh, taking long before they conceive. Okay. Yes. So Dr. maybe you could help us to know the available treatment for infertility or for fertility issues. Thank you. I, I think that's a, that's a good question. So there, there is a wide array or wide arsenal for treating infertility. And with the current advances in reproductive technology, we believe that most couples should not give up before, uh, I mean, before they try, okay? Of course, the treatment depends on the cause. So if the cause is, uh, uh, let's say, it's a congenital abnormality, say a woman is not able to produce eggs mm -hmm. and then uh, but she has a uterus of course that woman can carry a pregnancy with the donated eggs okay. if it is a man and uh, there is a woman who is producing the eggs and uh, ha the man has a congenital abnormality maybe he has uh, things uh, congenital abnormalities that do not allow him to produce sperm mm -hmm then they can still have a baby uh, with donated sperms. So that is the worst case scenario. The other cases are usually acquired. Like, God forbid, for a, ma a woman, let's say the, the woman is not ovulating regularly, because that's one of the major causes of irregular menses. Okay. Then what we do is that uh, we have confirmed the tubes are normal, the man is producing the sperms. Then what we do is that we give that woman ovulation induction drugs. So we give her drugs that will make her to ovulate, mm -hmm. and then they can be able to time their uh, uh, their coitus, uh, then they are able to get a baby. If it is the fallopian tubes that are blocked uh, in a woman, there are two ways that you can manage this woman. Uh, the best for such a woman, if they can afford as a couple, is to have IVF. Uh, but of course, if they cannot, and what we have always done traditionally is to try to open the fallopian tubes. Depending on the severity of the damage that those tubes have, uh, have undergone, then uh, some people are successful, but the success rate is not uh, very good. So as long as a woman has uh, a uterus 
and uh, they are ovulating, then such a woman whose fallopian tubes are blocked, then we can be able to uh, uh, be able to uh, do IVF. Okay. For men, the main problem, as we said, is men with the low sperm count or sperm uh, sperms that are not normal or they are producing the spans and the, uh, the vast difference is blocked. Mm -hmm. So what can be done in such a man is that uh, if the sperm count is very low and the woman is normal, so she's producing the eggs, the fallopian tubes are normal mm -hmm. and the uterus is normal, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, you can get the spans from the man and then you concentrate the sperms and put them directly into the uterus. Okay. okay? So that is called artificial insemination. Mm -hmm. And for the case that you ask where the man is very normal, mm -hmm. the woman is also normal. Mm -hmm. And we talked about uh, uh, anti-sperm antibodies. Mm -hmm. So you can bypass the mucus by injecting the sperms directly mm -hmm. into the uterus. Okay and that couple is likely to get pregnant. Of course, if the sperms are too few, but the man in the ejaculate, in the semen, then you can be able to get those sperms. As long as they are normal, then get the egg from out the woman and inject directly into, the, uh, into the, that egg, then incubate that egg, and then when it reaches the stage of uh, uh, implantation, you put that egg into the woman's uterus. That is what IVF is in, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> so of course, for that man who is not producing any sperms, so there is blockage of the vast difference, mm -hmm. but there are some sperms in the testicles, mm -hmm. then you can get a single sperm. Okay, uh, from the testicles, mm -hmm. but now this is a slightly immature sperm. Mm -hmm. So you can also take that sperm and directly inject that sperm into the uh, uh, nucleus mm -hmm. of the female egg. Mm -hmm. So it is called intracytoplasmic uh, sperm transfer. Okay. So there is a lot that can be done for couples as 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 if, of course. The, the the eggs are there. Because okay. situations arise where you find some women who do not have normal uteruses mm -hmm. or for some reason the uterus were removed. Mm -hmm. Then this is where now people, couples can look for surrogate, surrogate uh, uh, mothers mm -hmm. where we get the eggs from the woman, the egg from the man, then fertilize them outside then we put them in a surrogate mother who can carry that pregnancy for that couple. Okay. Yes. Actually, there's a question along that line. Let me just uh, just ask it. Is there any biological connection with the child and the mother? Because uh, someone was just telling me she was thinking of surrogacy. Oh, did you? Okay, they were asking me if I tried surrogacy. I've been thinking of going through it, but I'm afraid uh, the mother might get an attachment with the child. Do you think there is that biological attachment that unes a mibebe, but then? Yeah, thank you. I think that's a great question. So surrogacy is a, uh, it's nice, but it is a complicated uh, sort of uh, way of getting children. But it's a nice, it's a nice one because before surrogacy came in, of course, a woman whose womb is not. Uh, able to carry a, a pregnancy, could not get her own uh, child mm -hmm. unless they, of course, adopted. Yeah. So now, attachment to a child, if, of course, could, you remember there is this saying that Kuza uh, Mutoto, Sio Ire Muhimu, Ire Muhimu Nikulea Uyo Mutoto. And that's why, even in couples where you find they adopt that child, then they get close to that child mm -hmm. and they get attached to that child. Mm -hmm. So, of course, a woman delivering that child, there are different ways of getting attached to this child. The, of course, the first one is carrying that pregnancy and feeling the feeling of that getting pregnant. I'm 
pregnant, there is a life moving in me, and then I deliver uh, this baby. That is a way of attachment. Mm -hmm. Then if we allow, the other way that women get attached is when they get breast, they start to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. Because breastfeeding is the all, another way that we got attached to our mothers, and that's why we love our mothers. Mm -hmm. So, of course, a woman who is a surrogate mother can get attached to this baby. Uh, but it also depends on the counseling that this woman has had. Mm -hmm. If they are properly counseled and they know what is being done uh, and they have accepted, then uh, they don't get uh, attached. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, now the mother who is using this other one to carry the pregnancy, what can we do for them to get attached? Remember, mm -hmm. the genetic makeup for this child that was carried by the other woman mm -hmm. is for the woman that donated that egg and the husband. Mm -hmm. So they carry the genetic makeup. So the baby is there. So the baby has no gen genetic uh, influence from the other, uh, from the surrogate mother. Mm -hmm. So in such a situation, a woman who has breast can be made to produce milk and start breastfeeding this baby. So you need just to give them the hormones and they will be able to breastfeed. Or just the mere fact that they start, they start suckling the, woman, the breast, uh, then the woman is likely to start producing milk, and this is another way of the helping them to get attached to their baby. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Senator Tali. With the interest of time, guys, me, I don't know how time is rushing, and maybe I will want to still maybe book another time with you, doctor, because I can tell this a lot, a lot. I'm feeling like, how do we compress this in this time you've given us? Huh? As we conclude, I would want to ask, maybe you would combine these two questions in one and answer them maybe now in uh, uh, in abroad or in the way that you find it. Um, as you talked of the treatment, there is this couple, actually there is an interview I did of Anod Mbaba, uh, she told us she's 80 something and her story is that she got married, she conceived, got a child, but the child died at 8 months. Since then she never got another child. Then Daisy was told it's about the blood group. What do you do for such couples? Is it as is there any hope for such couples that maybe today now has? Of course, it's past. Eh? But for anyone who is experiencing that, is there any hope? The other question I'd want you to tell us. This one has thousand questions about IVF success rate and how affordable is IVF in our country. Okay, maybe I'll start with the second one because that is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> IVF, I look at IVF as affordable, mm -hmm. but costly. Mm -hmm. uh, today, there are people who can afford a good watch. And you can see I don't have a watch. Mm -hmm. Because a watch is not my priority. Okay, if it was my priority, maybe I could have a watch or the 20, 30, 40. And there are people who are wearing watches worth millions of shillings. Mm -hmm. So, when we, I have a couple that really needs IVF, mm -hmm. what I normally tell them is that IVF is affordable, despite the fact that it is about 500,000. Mm -hmm. But what is our priorities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll find many couples waste a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, looking for different or, uh, fertility management uh, treatments. Mm -hmm. From the normal treatment uh, to herbal treatments, uh, all over. There are so many things. Got to go operations where we, we know that an operation may really not help that woman, etc. 
So when we need to do uh, an IVF is needed, what I normally tell people is that you can save, you can start saving. Don't look at the 500 because even now if you ask me for a thousand shillings, I don't have it in my pocket. Mm -hmm. But if you give me time and tell me I, next week I will need you to have 10,000, mm -hmm. then I will start planning and reducing my expenses today. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately you fight couples use a lot of money, they waste a lot of time from 20 years, 30 years, they are still going to see doctors, 40 years, they are still going to see doctors. Instead of being told from the beginning, here we have a problem mm -hmm. and uh, you may need IVF at the end of the day. And since you are 30 years, mm -hmm. please stop seeing the doctors, start saving mm -hmm. that money and by the maybe two to five years, mm -hmm. you have enough money. Mm -hmm. Then you can be able to do IVF. Mm -hmm. Success rate is about 20 to 30 percent in most of the situations, uh, because here you are looking at a situation where you have cells outside the body, and those cells must be kept alive in a laboratory. Okay, mm -hmm. so keeping those cells alive in that laboratory, that process is what costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and of course, sometimes you may have cells that are not viable, and then you find after uh, they have been put in the uterus, they don't take, so you find that a woman does not test positive. Mm -hmm. If a woman tests positive, that pregnancy is not any special from the other pregnancies. It's only that that couple did not have sex to conceive. Mm -hmm. So all the risks of a pregnancy, miscarriages, uh, intrauterine deaths, okay, abnormalities, can also occur in an IVF pregnancy. Because it's not a special, it's just a normal pregnancy mm -hmm. where a couple did not have sexual intercourse, they just had uh, fertilization outside the body. So the other question was on uh, blood group. Now, blood group does not cause infertility. Blood group does not also cause early pregnancy losses. So blood group usually, and the commonest is recess incompatibility, where you find a woman is recess negative and then the spouse is recess positive. Mm -hmm. So if this woman carries a baby who is recess positive, mm -hmm. then the first baby is usually not affected. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because this woman will produce uh, soldiers, we call them antibodies. Mm -hmm. But the first antibody group are big, they are called IgM. So they cannot cross from the mother's blood to the fetus, to the fetus, to the fetus blood. Okay? okay, so that the first fit baby is usually known. It's only with the subsequent challenges, with subsequent pregnancies, where the mother is not given drugs to make her not to recognize the baby's blood group, okay. that this mother now will produce more antibodies called IgG which can be able to close to the baby's side, mm -hmm. okay, and then they start destroying the baby's blood. Mm -hmm. So what happens with subsequent pregnancy is that the baby will grow in the uterus, mm -hmm. okay, and then because of the destruction of the baby's blood, mm -hmm. then the baby will start to uh, overproduce their own blood, mm -hmm. okay, and the, with more destruction, then they get anemic within the mother's womb. Oops. Then this baby, uh, will get, can get heart failure within the mother's womb because of the severe anemia. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if this baby is born, uh, then the baby will get early jaundice. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is that when blood is destroyed, one of the things that is produced is called bilirubin. Mm -hmm. So in, when the baby is in the mother's womb, the mother acts as the, the organ that removes the bilirubin from the baby's side. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now immediately the baby is, is born, then the baby is supposed to 
uh, remove that bilirubin from their, uh, their blood. Mm -hmm. But then the system in the baby is not mature enough, mm -hmm. so the bilirubin starts to accumulate in the baby. Mm -hmm. And then they get brain damage, something we call connectors, and then the baby may die in either in utero, if in, inside the mother's womb, if the destruction was too much. Mm -hmm. So this is a baby who is alive, mm -hmm. but then dies. Mm -hmm. Or the baby may get uh, severe jaundice and get brain damage, and then they may die in childhood. Okay. But the treatment is very easy. All women who are pregnant, all women should know their blood group okay. and their racial status. Okay. So that when they get pregnant, then all women who get pregnant and they are racist negative, then we would want to know their spouse's blood group. Okay. Because if their spouse is less as negative, then there is no problem. Mm -hmm. But if their spouse is less as positive, mm -hmm. then at 28 weeks from the time the mother gets pregnant, we give them anti-D to reduce the risk of what we call isoimmunization. Then when the baby is born, immediately the baby is born, we check their blood group. If they are like the dad, mm -hmm. then we give the mother another anti-D. Okay? That way we reduce the risk of that complication mm -hmm. from around 12% mm -hmm. to about 1.5 to 2%. Okay. So that is how we protect uh, mothers and babies. Wow. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. Looks like every infertility issue has a, a treatment. You just need to keep at it and not lose hope. And uh, oh my goodness, time is far much gone. If you allow me, doctor, to take one last question, which is not fertility now related, at least uh, it doesn't look like this whole you know, visit was just about fertility. Someone was telling me that they have a discharge. Let me just see. Uh, I've been having a discharge, been treated with several by several gynas, used several medicine, but haishi. Some gynas said that it is just my body. Then again, when I'm done with my period, every time nashikwa na kadiasis, I don't know why. Note that I have abstained for close two years. What could be the issue? Okay, so two issues there. One, of course, the issue of discharge. Discharge can be normal, we call it physiological discharge, and uh, every woman has their own discharge. And the, the normal physiological discharge is affected by the hormones that women produce through the, out the cycle. So you see that immediately, of course, during period, the, the discharge is bloody. Mm -hmm. Then immediately after this uh, period, you find the discharge is brownish, it goes changing until around the time of ovulation, when the discharge is uh, like a, the white, the egg white, okay? Yeah. And it is slimy and it can be stretched. Mm -hmm. Then it goes after that, towards the period, it becomes cheese-like, eh? mm -hmm. okay? So mid-cycle, the discharge is more. And it's supposed to allow the spouse to penetrate, mm -hmm. okay, into the uh, uterus and into the fallopian tubes for fertilization. Mm -hmm. Of course, we also have the abnormal discharge. And abnormal discharge could be because of an infection or it could be because of some small growths that are occurring within the uh, genital tract. Like if you have a growth in the cervix, like cervical polyps, or unfortunately for women who have uh, cancer of the cervix, then the first thing they note is that I have an abnormal discharge. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. then you know, of course, there are some growths that are either cancerous and non cancerous within the uterus mm -hmm. that can also cause a discharge. Mm -hmm. But infections is also another major cause, and in women, you may have just an overgrowth of the normal bacteria within the uh, vagina and uh, this may cause a discharge. Because there are also the abnormal uh, bacteria that may also cause a discharge. So candida is also a major cause of problems and the candida comes in because of the dynamics of the mucosal immunity. When the, the normal immunity in the vagina is through formation of an acid. 
So the environment within the vagina is acidic. But now our blood is less acidic. So it is basic. So around the time of period, because of the hormones that are there around the time of period, and also the blood, then you find the environment within the vagina is less acidic. And that's how candida sometimes may come in during the time of uh, period. Of course, the other thing that affects is antibiotics use, etc. So for such a patient with recurrent discharges, the best thing would be to know what is causing the discharge. Is it infectious or is it not an infection? And if it is an infection, then what bacteria is there? Then you do culture and sensitivity and you know what is the best drug to give this woman. But just taking antibiotics may be making the situation worse in such a woman because you kill the normal bacteria within the genital tract. Okay. Thank you so much. I will uh, ask you to conclude as you, you, you maybe generally. You have said 20 years. I, I didn't even know that much. <laughs> you just give us generally maybe if our lifestyle can cause infertility or the area that you think you want to address as we conclude and as we close this discussion for now. Okay, I want to conclude this discussion by saying that there is always hope. Losing hope is actually one of the, of course, major causes of not getting pregnant. Because, of course, we, we can treat, but of course, as age goes, because we lost hope, then, of course, you cannot get help, especially when you reach uh, age where you are, the women's egg are not uh, able to be fertilized. So there is hope, but also hope all comes when you look go to a specialist. Ensure that when you have a problem, you can get a gynecologist, and then, of course, if a general gynecologist is not able to handle your problem, nowadays we have many specialists who are called fertility specialists, and they are available. So I think what I can say is that there are many reasons why couples do not get pregnant, Sometimes it is timing, sometimes, of course, in this era where a man is working in Qatar and um, uh, the woman is in Kenya, there is no time to make babies unlike those days where our fathers and mothers used to stay in the same house. Mm -hmm. So there are many reasons and I think the best way is to, to handle infertility problems is for you to seek advice mm -hmm. and uh, get treated because you can be treated okay. thank you welcome i want you to tell people where they can find you because i have i've had testimonies so i'm sure of your services so where would people find you if they wanted your services wow so i <laughs> this is something that i find hard uh mm -hmm. to because then we should not advertise ourselves but it's always okay. good to say where we want Mm -hmm. So as I said, uh, I have been a gynecologist in Thika uh, for many, many years. I'm in a place called the Sour House, where I've been from 2002, uh, when I qualified as a gynecologist. Uh, so if somebody wants uh, to see me, uh, then uh, they can always find me in the Thika. I teach your children and uh, other people's children in KU. Uh, Kenyatta University and uh, uh, that's, uh, I hope we are doing a good job. But of course I'm not the only gynecologist in Kenya. We have gynecologists in uh, Kisumu, we have gynecologists in Kakamega, we have gynecologists in Mombasa, we also know gynecologists even outside this country. So if somebody has a problem and is outside there, please feel free to contact us and then, even if you are not able to come to us, we can be able to tell you who you can see wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. I believe we shall see you again here Thank at you Susila Dada, <laughs> yeah. because that was a good session. Well, and I know there is much more that you can offer to us. Any time for <laughs> women, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to give uh, any advice. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
So guys, that was it. What a session, what a moment. I'm sure you guys have learned. Please comment. Thank you to those who sent their questions. I hope they are well answered. If you still feel like you need more clarity, I love the fact that Dr. Tari have said we are welcome another time. So we can try this again. We will do it actually, not try, we will do it. Eh? So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for always being here at Suzy Yule Diadem. Dr. Wanyoro doesn't work alone, so maybe I'll just let you see the beautiful, beautiful ladies you will meet when you come here. Say that. Say hi to my people. Hello. Wow. So those are the beautiful ladies that you'll meet when you come here, when you make that call. Remember, I've told you, if you want to have a visit to Dr. Ray's office, you can always call. His contact number is 0715-603-332. I said, I'm not doing this for advertisement. I've not been paid. Otherwise... He still had people when I came in, so I'm not being paid for this, but his services, of course, they are selling out. So bye, guys. Please like, share, subscribe.